Let's delve into the ongoing theme, setting the stage to explore the impactful events capturing the human mind, a dimension often underestimated in today's awareness. Our journey unfolds against the backdrop of significant spiritual occurrences, laying the foundation for understanding the remarkable events currently unfolding. A pivotal spiritual battle unfolded in the ethereal realms from the early 1840s to the autumn of 1879, a struggle recurrent in the tapestry of world and human evolution, symbolised by the archetypal imagery of Michael or St George grappling with the dragon. In the spiritual tapestry, Michael emerged triumphant in 1879, securing a victory for the spiritual realms. This triumph cast the spirits of darkness, antagonists to the Michaelic impulses, down from the spiritual domain into the human realm. Since then, these spirits have actively influenced the emotions, willpower and thoughts of humanity. Understanding contemporary events necessitates turning our inner gaze towards these spiritual forces now in motion among us. Naturally, curiosity arises about the nature of the spiritual battle spanning the 1840s to the 1870s and the subsequent actions of the spirits of darkness post-November 1879. Unveiling the tale behind this profound battle, akin to a behind-the-scenes narrative of world history, unfolds gradually. Today, our focus rests on exploring how reflections of this spiritual battle manifested in human spheres. The turning point in the evolution of modern cultural realms surfaced in the early 1840s, ushering in the impetus for materialism's development. Materialism, a consequence of significant spiritual events, cascaded downward, progressively instilling materialistic tendencies in humanity. Examining how spiritual events mirrored on Earth, two prominent aspects come to light. In the unfolding panorama of human history, a remarkable surge in purely physical intellect and a culture grounded in this phenomenon became evident during the 1840s, 50s, 60s and 70s, an era whose subtlety and depth in conception, acumen and critical thinking surpassed contemporary perceptions. To future observers, the brilliance of this period may be more apparent, as it marked an unparalleled upswing in the refinement of ideas, the precision of critical thinking, and the birth of technical inventions. Materialistic ideologies, thriving during these decades, fostered intellectual prowess bound intricately to the brain. Those delving into the evolution of humanity with an appreciation for subtler nuances would acknowledge that never before had the adherents of materialism demonstrated such astuteness. The intellectual landscape of the time, encompassing not only fine literature but various domains, reflected a surge in well-defined ideas and the maturation of critical thinking. This intellectual flourishing mirrored the aspirations of certain spirits of darkness during the 40s, 50s, 60s and 70s of the last century. These spiritual entities harboured ambitions of claiming an ancient inheritance of humanity. Throughout millennia, progressive spirits of light guided humanity through blood bonds, weaving connections within families, tribes, nations and races based on ancient human and world karma. The profound feeling for these blood bonds engendered a sense of mission, extending far back into the world's history, designed to integrate these bonds into the broader human karma. Examining the spiritual world during the 1820s and 1830s, when souls destined for human bodies resided there, reveals that these souls, about to embark on earthly existence, carried impulses shaped by millennia of connections to specific families, tribes, nations and races. From the 1840s onward, these souls faced the pivotal decision to incarnate into particular bodies. Spirits of light, guiding human evolution through ancient blood bonds, influenced the souls to follow the trajectories of ancient human karma upon entering bodies meant to populate the second half of the 19th and early 20th centuries. The spirits of light employed traditional measures to shape and direct the destiny of these souls. The spirits of darkness harboured a compelling desire to wrest control over the impulses of the spirits of light from human souls and replace them with their own. The stakes in the Battle of 1879 were significant, 
Had the spirits of darkness emerged victorious, the landscape of human existence would have undergone a radical transformation. Souls would have inhabited different bodies, and the orchestration of human affairs on earth would have aligned with the ideals of the spirits of darkness. However, the victory achieved by Michael over the dragon in the autumn of 1879 thwarted this potential outcome. The terrestrial echoes of this spiritual struggle during the 1840s, 50s, 60s and 70s manifested in the heightened acumen and critical faculties as previously described. It's crucial to move beyond mere speculation and engage in genuine spiritual observation to comprehend the profound interplay between the physical and spiritual realms. Speculation alone falls short. Instead, careful observation reveals that the very qualities characterising the surge in physical intellect during that period reflect the battle over reproduction and the succession of generations. Understanding these intricacies requires an observational approach, not just intellectual speculation. It's an error to assume that the key to unravelling the connections between the physical and spiritual worlds lies in the application of the physical intellect. The conventional rules of logic, derived from the physical sciences, may lead astray in this context, as they are tailored for the physical world and not the complex relationship between the physical and spiritual realms. Thus, one avenue through which the battle for the blood manifested on earth was in the nuanced dynamics of the intellectual and spiritual interplay, a testament to the profound interconnectedness of the seen and unseen forces shaping our existence. Another facet of the battle played out through the emergence of spiritualism in the 1840s and subsequent years, as mentioned earlier. Notably sizable groups sought to establish connections with the spiritual realm through mediums, employing physical means for their endeavours. The potential success of this approach depended on the strength of the spirits of darkness, had they emerged victorious in 1879 over Michael's adherents. Spiritualism, deriving impulses not only from the earthly realm, but also influenced by forces from the otherworldly, would have experienced an unprecedented proliferation under such circumstances. It's crucial to emphasise that the acceptance or rejection of such phenomena is not a matter of personal choice. Rather, it's intricately woven into the fabric of spiritual dynamics. The occurrences within spiritualistic circles represented, in part, a significant intrusion of the spiritual world, closely intertwined with human destinies, However, these phenomena were essentially a reflection of the lost battle in the spiritual realm. The waning momentum and peculiar corruption of spiritualism after this time point out the divergence from its intended course. In a world shaped by the victory of the spirits of darkness in 1879, spiritualism would have been the primary means through which people engaged with the spiritual realm. In this alternate reality, indescribable acumen would have permeated various spheres of life, from speculative endeavours on the stock exchange to the pursuit of spiritual fulfilment through mediums. This dichotomy, heightened physical acumen and a quest for spiritual connection based on diminished consciousness, captures the essence of the spirits of darkness intentions. Above all, their aim was to hinder the descent of spiritual experiences, the living encounter with the spirit into human souls. The gradual realisation of this goal became inevitable following the spirits of darkness defeat in 1879. The potential for the spiritual experiences integral to anthroposophy as utilised in its spiritual science would have been entirely unattainable had the spirits of darkness emerged triumphant. In such a scenario, they would have retained the life and activity within the spiritual realms curtailing the possibility of direct experiences in the spiritual world. It is precisely due to their defeat that a shift occurred, allowing for the emergence and continual possibility of gaining first-hand experiences in the spiritual realm, diverging from the limitations of merely critical, physical intelligence and the mediumistic approach. Despite the prevailing materialistic tendencies in our age, an age seemingly inclined towards increasing materialism, spiritual worlds reveal themselves in unexpected places. Spiritual influences permeate the fabric of existence, 
though their nature is not always benevolent in the present context. Acknowledging one's awareness of spiritual influences often elicits discomfort, leading many to conceal these influences in various aspects of their lives. Poets, for instance, trace the origins of their creative impulses to spiritual experiences akin to dreams. Those venturing into literary pursuits or initiating journals often attribute their inspiration to what they term as dreams, concealing the fact that these are manifestations of impulses transcending from the spiritual to the physical world. Such experiences extend beyond the realms of creativity, subtly shaping actions and decisions in other domains. However, the reluctance to admit these influences stems from the fear of being perceived as eccentric or irrational. This reticence, unfortunately, contributes to a limited understanding of the depth of spiritual interactions in contemporary human lives. The sporadic occurrences witnessed today are merely the precursors to a more profound transformation that lies ahead. The victory of Michael in 1879 paved the way for spirituality to increasingly permeate human existence. The very existence of a science of the spirit owes its realisation to this victory. Without it, the truths integral to spiritual science would have remained confined to the spiritual realms, inaccessible to human cognition and non-existent in the physical world. The images provided offer glimpses into the intentions of the spirits of darkness during the 1840s, 50s, 60s and 70s when they waged their battle against the followers of Michael. Since the autumn of 1879, these spirits have dwelled among humanity, yet their aims have not materialised as envisioned. Spiritualism has not become the prevailing human persuasion and the envisioned surge in materialistic cleverness has not come to pass. Instead, spiritual truths are taking root among human beings. However, we must remain vigilant, recognising the presence of the spirits of darkness among us. It is crucial to be aware when encountering their influences and gain a genuine understanding of their whereabouts. The immediate future poses a potential danger, the unconscious surrender to these influences, irrespective of whether they are acknowledged or overlooked. The primary concern of the spirits of darkness now dwelling among us is to sow confusion among the burgeoning elements on earth, these elements, destined to spread in a way that allows the spirits of light to maintain their influence, face the risk of being pushed in the wrong direction. As I've previously mentioned, one paradoxical misdirection involves the development of human bodies to accommodate certain spiritualities, countered by the materialistic trend, guided by the spirits of darkness, which seeks to combat it through physical means. I've highlighted the spirits of darkness's intention to inspire their human host to create a vaccine, a substance that will eliminate any inclination towards spirituality in young souls. This influence will act indirectly through the living body. While current vaccinations target specific diseases, the envisioned future involves inoculating children with a substance designed to make them immune to what materialists perceive as foolish inclinations connected with spiritual life. This subtle manipulation of the physical body becomes a tool for redirecting the course of human spiritual development, aligning it with the materialistic inclinations favoured by the spirits of darkness. The initial steps have been taken, particularly in the literary realm, where the impact is somewhat less detrimental. Notably, learned medical experts have authored books delving into the perceived abnormalities of certain men of genius, Attempts to understand figures like Conrad Ferdinand Meyer, Victor Scheffel, Nietzsche, Schopenhauer and even Goethe have been made by attributing certain abnormalities to them. The most astonishing twist in this line of inquiry extends to an attempt to interpret Jesus Christ and the Gospels through the lens of psychological abnormality. In these publications, the origins of Christianity are ascribed to an individual living at the beginning of our era – purportedly mentally and psychologically abnormal, who wandered through Palestine as Jesus Christ, spreading the influence of Christianity. These literary endeavours mark just the outset of a broader trend. The trajectory suggests a future where bodies can be vaccinated to suppress the development of inclinations towards spiritual ideas. The envisioned outcome is a populace that believes exclusively in the physical world, perceived through the senses, throughout their lives. Drawing inspiration from medical practices, 
individuals are currently vaccinated against diseases like consumption. Similarly, the plan is to inoculate against any leanings towards spirituality. This example highlights the gravity of the many developments poised to unfold in the near and distant future. A concerted effort to sow confusion in the impulses seeking to descend to earth, following the victory of the spirits of light. The overarching objective is to disrupt the flow of these impulses by first instigating confusion in people's perspectives, turning their concepts and ideas inside out. This process demands careful scrutiny, as it is a significant element contributing to the backdrop of events currently in preparation, signalling a transformative phase with profound implications. Carefully choosing my words, I use the phrase in preparation with a profound awareness, considering the significant events of the past three years. Those who delve deeper into these matters recognise them as preparations. It is a misconception for anyone to believe that the current conflict, which is not a conventional war, will seamlessly transition to a peace reminiscent of the old order in the immediate future. This belief stems from a superficial understanding of the complexities at play. Many may hold on to this hope if outward appearances align with preconceived notions, failing to grasp the underlying realities dormant beneath the surface. Examining the decades from the 1840s onward, both in a general sense and with attention to details, reveals a tapestry of significant events. We've explored these themes broadly in recent weeks, and I've revisited them to some extent today. A closer study of representative figures, those embodying the spiritual impulses propelling evolution, validates the general insights gained. To illustrate, let me offer an example that may seem minor but holds significance, as I touched upon it last year. Considerable commentary has been dedicated to Goethe's Faust, and among the various discussions, Oswald Marbach's reflections stand out for their depth and, in many respects, profound insights. Interestingly, those who often appear to lack profundity in their analyses are the literary historians, whose academic responsibilities sometimes hinder a genuine understanding of such matters. Oswald Marbach, in contrast, approached Faust with a unique perspective, not burdened by the conventional constraints of literary historians. His lectures on Goethe's Faust, coupled with his diverse academic background encompassing mathematics, mechanics and technology at Leipzig University, revealed a multidimensional understanding. Marbach's proficiency in shedding light on the mysteries of the cosmos through mechanics and technology challenges the conventional approach of modern historians and literary scholars. It is noteworthy that Marbach, despite his profound insights, deviated from speaking on Goethe's Faust during the 1850s, 60s and 70s, focusing instead on mathematics, mechanics and technology during that period. The hiatus lasted for several decades until he resumed lecturing on Faust in the late 70s. Marbach himself addressed this hiatus in his preface, providing a glimpse into the inner and outer factors that influenced his shift in focus. He acknowledged the passage of time, his own ageing, and the changing disposition of his students over the years. His observation that semester by semester, students grew more morose while becoming cleverer hints at a broader societal trend. During this interval, the prevailing spirit waned in its open interest in the spiritual realms, giving way to an age where utility superseded beauty. Marbach, adapting to the evolving educational landscape, temporarily set aside philosophy and poetry, embracing the teaching of the exact sciences, mathematics, physics and mechanics. The shift was a response to both personal inclination and the demands of the times, as he yielded to necessity while awaiting a more opportune moment to reintroduce philosophical and poetic pursuits. This intriguing journey through academic shifts reflects not only Marbach's personal evolution, but also mirrors the broader societal changes and the shifting dynamics in the pursuit of knowledge during the period. The era marked by materialistic acumen was a pivotal time, and a particularly intriguing statement in Marbach's preface sheds light on the prevailing concerns of that period. Marbach, reflecting on his conscious choices, admits that while he thought he pursued his desires, he was, in fact, under an illusion, 
obeying the spirit of the time. This revelation prompts a call for widespread awareness about the pervasive nature of illusions. It aligns with the ideal of the spirits of darkness before 1879 and their intensified efforts since then, weaving illusions over human beings, infiltrating human brains and allowing illusions to course through human hearts. Examining Marbach as a representative figure influenced by heavenly forces, it is noteworthy that his focus on interpreting Goethe's Faust evolved over time. In the 1840s, he primarily spoke about Faust, part one at the university, with little interest in part two. However, after Michael's victory over the dragon, when Marbach resumed lecturing on Faust, his emphasis shifted to part two. The age characterised by acumen and critical faculties made accessing part two of Goethe's Faust challenging, and even today, this profound work, a great affirmation of Goetheanism, remains relatively misunderstood. The difficulty in grasping part two stems from the humorous and ironic atmosphere in which people live today, a social ambience evolving since the 16th century. Goethe, not merely a man of his time, possessed an inner foresight that allowed him to peer into the 20th, 21st and subsequent centuries, writing part two of Faust for these future epochs. This futuristic perspective is revealed through the magnificent irony with which Goethe portrays the developments from the 16th century onward in part two of Faust. Goethe humorously presents Faust's quest for the spirit juxtaposed with Mephistopheles, the representative of the spirits of darkness, who invents and orchestrates everything humanity has come to depend on, particularly in the 20th century. The creations and advances admired today are subtly portrayed as the contrivances of Mephistopheles, an insight that will become clearer to humanity in the future. Faust's pursuit of the spirit, set against Mephistopheles's role in shaping the world's trajectory, encapsulates the complex interplay between spiritual aspirations and the influences of the spirits of darkness, offering a profound commentary on the evolving nature of human existence. Part two of Faust holds hidden insights that can guide us in being vigilant and aware. The fact that an individual who delved into physics, mechanics, mathematics and technology felt compelled to speak about part two precisely after the victory over the dragon is a profound symptom. For decades prior, the emphasis was on part one, as it alone could be comprehended in that era. In the unfolding narrative, especially evident last year, Anthroposophy emerges as a force that breathes life into concepts previously presented by Goethe in images. While anthroposophy is not directly derived from the study of Faust, it undeniably sheds a new and clearer light on the powerful images depicted in Part 2, as well as in Goethe's eloquent discourses in Wilhelm Meister's journeyman years. This trend, aligning with the influence of the progressive spirits of light, is poised to grow over time, countering the efforts of the spirits of darkness. Its success hinges on humanity's vigilance against these dark forces. The past three years have served as a challenge to be watchful and alert, although the number of souls attuned to this call remains insufficient. A contrary trend, fueled by the spirits of hindrance, has been observed in various corners, particularly when spiritual life becomes possible, these obstructive spirits assert themselves prominently. Characteristic instances have been witnessed, with the likelihood of more to come. However, even hinting at such matters risks continuous misunderstanding, given the prevalent spiritual atmosphere saturated with a will to misinterpret. Words, being human expressions, carry diverse associations, contributing to the challenges of effective communication in a climate where misunderstanding tends to be the immediate response. In the present day, the judgments of many individuals are often clouded by national passions. Merely characterising someone as a human individual on earth is sometimes misconstrued when it comes to people associating with a particular nation. This happens even when discussing individuals involved in current events, where the focus is on the individual rather than the nation itself. It is crucial to recognise that statements about individuals do not necessarily reflect views about entire nations. The belief that the ongoing tempest is solely caused by current, widely discussed events is not only harmful, but also senseless. 
The true causes are deeply hidden and they don't necessarily originate from national aspirations, although certain powers may exploit them. Unfortunately, many people remain superficial, unwilling to delve into these complexities, and it will take time before a more objective perspective emerges. A significant portion of humanity tends to attribute greatness and foresight to ideas that often originate from minds as limited as those of individuals just out of teacher training college. This phenomenon extends even to the broader political landscape, where figures are credited with far-reaching wisdom. Woodrow Wilson serves as an example, and spiritual science has long provided insights into his world school mastery. In lectures given in Helsingfors in 1913, these insights were discussed, highlighting the shallow superficiality of Wilson's perspectives. However, during that period, expressing such views placed one outside the spirit of the time as Wilson's essays were being translated into European languages. It will likely take a considerable amount of time before people start feeling uneasy about taking the grammar school level policies of Woodrow Wilson seriously. Spirits of darkness are actively working to obscure human minds, creating a fog that envelops individuals' understanding of the world. A moment of awakening will arrive when people, emerging from these mists and vapours, find it challenging to comprehend how they allowed themselves to be guided by the wisdom of Woodrow Wilson without a sense of embarrassment. This realisation may dawn when people begin to feel uncomfortable with the policies that are currently deemed acceptable. Expressing truth-inspired perspectives today proves challenging as they often stand in stark opposition to ingrained ideas. The difficulty is compounded by the prevalent atmosphere shaped not only in the last three years, but also by what has been termed a social carcinoma in previous Vienna lectures. It becomes crucial to approach these matters with profound seriousness, refraining from applying familiar concepts and ideas as criteria. The present time reveals the inadequacy and utter uselessness of accepted ideas in the face of unfolding events. It is indecent for people to persist in basing their judgment on ideas that have proven wrong in the context of current world history. Attempting to remedy present ills with the very principles that contributed to their emergence is a self-deception of the highest order. Humanity possesses a reservoir of cultural achievements from older times, now being depleted with each passing day. The evidence of this depletion is mounting, yet there is a conspicuous absence of new developments to fill the void. Many individuals remain stuck in the mindset of 1913, believing that the understanding they had then is still sufficient for 1917. The lack of a sense of reality prevents them from acknowledging that such thinking played a significant role in the events of 1917 and cannot serve as a cure for the current challenges of 1917. The urgent requirement of the present era is to delve deeply into the events since the fall of the spirits of darkness, gaining insights into the occurrences of the 1880s, 1890s and the first two decades of the 20th century. Judgments regarding these events are currently mired in confusion, highlighting the pressing need for a clearer understanding. Do we truly grasp the radical shift in human feelings and reactions after 1879 compared to the preceding era? Exploring works like part two of Goethe's Faust becomes instrumental in our progress, for such compositions serve as critiques of the anticipated content of the 20th century. Oswald Marbach, for instance, only unlocked access to part two after the fall of the spirits of darkness. These insights and impulses pave the way for our internal growth, enabling us to address the pressing needs of our time. Many needs planted before 1879 are yet to bear fruit, prompting a significant question that should linger in every human soul. Today, I pose it merely as a question. The current events entwining us shed light on humanity's present standing. Understanding these events is crucial, but equally essential is finding a path beyond them. Despite a perceived lack of insight into the prevailing situation, it is not that individuals are incapable of comprehending, rather they choose not to listen. This reluctance parallels the disregard for ideologies like Goethianism, akin to the voice of the 20th century. However, this voice can only be rightly understood if individuals earnestly seek to fathom the profound significance of the fall of the spirits of darkness 
in the autumn of 1879, to grasp the current age, an understanding of humanity's spiritual evolution is imperative. Hence the reference to Oswald Marbach, whose poem from last year exemplifies how he contemplates the past and gazes into the future. This composition commemorates the anniversary of Goethe's entry into communities known as Masonic or similar, a term that held different connotations in the 18th century than it does today. Goethe's perspective granted him insight into numerous mysterious impulses traversing the world, insights that many people are too superficial to acknowledge. In this mood, my brother, father, sublime master, we extend our hands across a century to celebrate the enduring love that unites and tightly bonds all independent minds. To you, the greatest of spirits, the epitome of independent thought, we strive to ascend, dedicating ourselves and our sons to reach the heights you sought. Your endeavours mirrored ours, but the soul of your quest for self-knowledge leading to wisdom was a vibrant, actively lived life, a creative force progressing towards works that endure in glorious beauty for eternity. Like Israel, you wrestled with God until victory over yourself was achieved. The mystery that forever binds us eludes explanation to unenlightened souls, yet it is to be made known to the world through deeds of purest love that never waver, in the clear light that spirit imparts to spirit, and in the eternal life that shall never fade. Master, lead on. Where you went before, we are drawn to follow with ardent longing. This is the sentiment that must open the gates of fulfilment. And that's a wrap for today's learning journey. Thank you so much for joining us and experiencing all the excitement. If you had as much fun as we did, don't forget to give that like button a big thumbs up and subscribe.